Good evening and welcome. I'm Councillor Tony Vickers, the Vice Chairman of the Western Area Planning Committee. In the absence of the elected Chairman, Councillor Dennis Bennyworth, who has a clash with the AGM of the Royal Berkshire Fire and Rescue Authority, I'm taking his place and that's why we elect a Vice Chair. The other members of the committee joining me this evening are Councillors Adrian Abbs, Phil Barnett, Jeff Kant, Hilary Cole, Caroline Culver, Lynn Doherty, substituting for Councillor Bennyworth, Clive Hooker, and Howard Wollaston. Before proceeding, I just have to read out some guidance on the COVID situation for those present. This meeting is being held in line with current COVID restrictions, and we need to remind all persons attending the meeting in person that they must sign on in the meeting on the meeting register. I hope you've all done that. And the NHS app, and I've left my mobile at home, so I haven't done that, but I did do a negative lateral flow test. Wear a face covering in the building unless you're seated in the meeting or have a face covering exemption. Observe two meter social distancing where possible. Clean your desk and any supplied equipment, such as the microphone, before and after the meeting using cleaning materials supplied. Avoid physical contact, such as handshakes. Avoid sharing pens, documents, and other objects. Use hand sanitizer when entering and before leaving the room and the building, and after touching any surfaces, such as door handles, etc. and abide by any signage or seating plans to help maintain social distancing. Moving on, the following officers are attending to advise and support the meeting. Mr. Simon Till, who's the team leader, Western Area Planning. Mr. Bob Dre, Senior Planning Officer. Mrs. Sean Cutts, Senior Planning Officer. Mr. Paul Goddard, Highways Officer. Mrs. Sharon Armour, Legal Advisor. Gordon Oliver, the Clerk. And I'm also assisted by Stephen Chard as the Zoom host for this evening. The meeting is taking place both over Zoom and with councillors present and COVID compliant in the council chamber. And following the expiry of the emergency coronavirus regulations that permitted remote meetings, all of the council's public meetings must now take place in person at a single specified geographic location with physical presence at that location. Officers presenting items on the agenda and parish council representatives, supporters, objectors, and the applicant or agent making a presentation to the committee have been encouraged to do so remotely via Zoom. All those present in the council chamber, both councillors and officers, have signed the attendance sheet to state they've had a negative COVID test within the past 24 hours. The meeting is being live streamed on YouTube, so members of the public are able to follow the proceedings. And for the benefit of those engaging remotely, I will ask the clerk to run through some standard reminders about the way we conduct council meetings via Zoom. Thank you. In addition to the points displayed on the screen, only members of the committee in the council chamber are able to take part in the vote for the formal decision. If we need to adjourn the meeting for any reason, the chairman will advise the revised time and date of the meeting. If it's a short adjournment, then this Zoom meeting will recommence. Otherwise, a fresh appointment will be sent out. Do members have any questions about the way in which we'll be conducting the meeting? Thank you, Mr.
Uh, the chairman, Councillor Dennis Bennyworth, has sent his apologies. Uh, Councillor Lynn Doherty will be a substitute, and you, Vice Chairman, uh, Councillor Tony Vickers, will chair the meeting tonight. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Hello. Oh, who's that? Muted. Oh. Uh, since um, Gordon Oliver gave us the instructions, um, we haven't been able to hear you online. I'm sorry about that. Possibly I didn't press my button. The odd so, thing is now you still appear to be muted, but I can hear you. I've, I've now pressed my button, so you should be able to hear me. Is that all right? Online? Um, I right. think, can we just confirm the vote that's been taken? for members that are joining by Zoom, because if they didn't hear you, that might be the bit they didn't hear. Well, that's an important business, I think, yes. So I proposed the motion, shall I read it again? Or the just summarise what members have just voted on. You might, the, the members uh, voted on a non-procedural motion to suspend standing orders in order to permit all those joining the meeting virtually, including members who are not members of the committee and officers to speak at the option of the chairman. And I asked for that to find a seconder, Councillor Wollaston seconded it and a vote was taking place, which was carried unanimously. Thank you, Mrs. Armour for reminding me on, on that. So uh, I will quickly move on. We've done the apologies. Uh, was that heard? Should I repeat that, Mrs. Armour? Or do you think that was heard? Um, I'm not sure it was heard, but I I think, well, actually it would have been heard because Mr. Oliver's um, microphone was working. So moving on to the minutes. Members, do you have any observation on the minutes of the last meeting, which you will find starting at page seven? That's the meeting of Wednesday, the 28th of April, 2021. Can I have a proposer then that we accept the minutes? Thank you, Councillor Abbs, seconded by Councillor Hilary Cole. Those in favour, just by show of hands, please. I think the two members abstaining probably weren't present. Thank you, so that's carried unanimously with just two abstentions. I declare the minutes have been approved, so I better sign them. I have a copy with me. Right, we knew, now move on to item four of the agenda. Oh, beg your pardon. We've got um, conflicts of interest. We've got declarations of interest. Declarations of interest. Uh, do members have any declarations of interest? Councillor Barnett. Thank you, Chairman. I'm a member of Duby Town Council and also its Planning and Highways Committee where the application that's in front of us tonight has been discussed and including earlier applications relating to it. Where, whereas tonight, I will be weighing up all the evidence in front of us and I will be voting accordingly on that evidence. Are there any other declarations of interest, please? I better declare an interest myself then, as I am also a member of Newbury Town Council and I believe I was present at the meeting when the Planning and Highways Committee discussed this. We agreed not to comment as we were the applicant. And I did not speak on that item, although I was present. I did provide a little bit of advice on the process that was followed for an application in which the council was the applicant. And um, I have had no part myself in the management of the, of the project or any of the decisions made by the town council on the project. So apart from that um, conflict of interest 
by being a member of the town council, I don't believe that I have a, a conflict of interest in any personal or prejudicial way. Um, indeed, had this not been freehold of the district council, and the fact that there were there are no outstanding objections, it would not have actually come to this committee for a decision. So uh, I do intend to remain in the chair, but I will not speak or vote on the matter, just to be absolutely clear that I have no part in the decision, apart from chairing the meeting, which is what uh, you kindly elected me to do as vice chair. Right, we can move on now to item four, there is only one application tonight because the first application on the published agenda has been withdrawn uh, because the highways department um, actually reconsidered the matter and decided that they wish to go into further discussions and the applicant has therefore with, withdrawn. Uh, the, the matter has been withdrawn from this agenda and will be discussed later. So we have only the one item, item two published agenda which is application number 20 02294 commend development of a new community cafe to replace outdated facilities and provide a new cafe with indoor and outdoor seating areas catering facilities public toilets changing facilities and storage known as the kiosk in victoria park and uh, the recommendation, as you'll see, is to approve the application. I will uh, now ask um, Officer, I think it's Counts, it's uh, Mrs. Cutts, isn't it, to uh, set out uh, from her report. Mrs. Cutts. Thank you, Chairman. I hope you can all hear. I'm just about to share the screen with you all. There we go. Can you see that? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this proposal is being considered by the committee as it is a major application on land which is owned by West Berkshire Council. The application, as outlined, has been submitted by Newbury Town Council, who are proposing to demolish the existing kiosk in Victoria Park. Um, which is situated adjacent to the avenue of lime trees within the park between the tennis courts and the children's play area. Um, the large block you can see is the uh, tennis courts. Um, and, oh, sorry. And the application site um, on the larger plan there, um, you can just see there uh, in this location here. Um, it is proposed to construct a new building to provide a cafe, changing rooms and public toilets. The building is to be situated on a similar footprint to the existing kiosks. Um, and you can see that outlined in the kind of orangey yellow colour here. Um, and it's, it's used in the same similar footprint, although slightly set back from the footpath. The proposed building is 19.15 metres long with an additional roof overhang above the external seating area of approximately four metres. Um, you can see the, the building and then the additional um, overhang comes to about this point here. The building has a width of 7.4 metres. Victoria Park is within flood zone three, and so the building is raised above the surrounding ground level. Sorry, my mouse got stuck um, around the surrounding flood level. The building. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. That's the elevations of the building. Um, as you can see, the building is slightly elevated um, above the ground level to ensure that the internal floor level is above the potential flood level. The building will be accessed via steps and a ramp. 
and the external seating area will be accommodated on this deck. Beneath the building, there will also be a flood void to accommodate water in the event of a flood. The overall ridge height is 5.8 metres, which is about two metres higher than the existing kiosk. The building, as you can see, will be timber clad with a standing seam roof with solar panels on the southern roof, roof slope. And this is the building itself. Um, this is the view looking from the southeast. Uh, this is a slightly further away view where you can see it from down towards the canal. And it will extend to the um, right of the picture towards the trees, but not as far as them. And just to familiarise yourself, these are the general views within the park. And from the west, it's pretty well screened by the tennis courts. Planning permission was granted in 2015 for a new cafe and community facility within the park and in 2017 for a proposed changing rooms. Both of these applications have now lapsed. Um, the site is within flood zone three and initially the Environment Agency objected to the application due to deficiencies in the flood risk mitigation measures and amended plans were subsequently submitted. The Environment Agency removed their objection and required conditions with regards to the development being carried out in accordance with the amended flood risk assessment and the flood mitigation details. The Council's engineers as local lead flood authority were also satisfied with the details that were submitted and with the sustainable drainage measures proposed. They, those being a rain garden by a retention area to the south of the building. However, further details are required as to its size and construction, and these can be dealt with via conditions. The conservation officer has commented that the building will be larger than the existing building on the site. Um, and as a consequence will be more prominent in views within the park, particularly due to the greater height of the building. Um, and as such, there's little to enhance the character and appearance of the building. However, the new building is opportunity for higher quality materials, which will enhance the appearance of the building and soften the impact on the park and the conservation area. The overall effect assessment was that the effect would be neutral and the improved community facilities would be of public benefit. Conditions have been re recommended with regards to the materials. And as noted on the update sheet, the doors and windows um, have been confirmed as acceptable. And it's condition four is amended to take account of the approved details, which will require further information to be submitted about the finish and materials. The ecologist was satisfied with the details with submitted which was submitted. Um, the existing kiosk and storage building are unlikely to be used by roost, for roosting by bats. However, bats forage and commute within the park, so conditions were requested with regards to lighting, integrated bat boxes and landscaping. The tree officer was satisfied with the tree protection measures that were submitted to protect the avenue of lime trees during construction. Uh, the archaeologist was satisfied with the building, building recording reports that were submitted for the storage building, which is originally built as a World War II air raid shelter. There is some archaeological interest in this area due to the Mesolithic potential of the land. Whilst the scheme of investigation was submitted with the application, further details are required with regards to the programme of work and a watching brief and these can be secured by condition. Environmental health have requested a condition with respect to noise and odour from cooking and extraction systems in the kitchen. And there were no objections from Sport England, Public Rights of Way, Highways, Thames Water, or any other consultees. No representations were received from members of the public. Um, in turn, the, turning to the principle of the development, this is considered to be acceptable. It's proposing an enhancement to the facilities within Victoria Park, which forms an important part of Newbury Town Centre, 
and is of importance to the community as a place of play, recreation, sport, exercise, relaxation and social interaction and improvements to it are supported by policy ADPP2. The main issues to consider in this particular application are the impact of the development on the character and appearance of the area, particularly the conservation area, the impact on flood risk and sustainable construction. In considering the effect on the character and appearance of the area, the conservation area has indicated that the build, existing buildings are bland and uninspiring and that the proposed building will be more prominent within the park um, and more prominent in views of it from outside the park due to the length and the increased height. However, it will be built of higher quality materials and that will go some way towards softening its impact. The materials are generally considered to be acceptable with the timber elevations and standing seam roof. Um, and conditions are required for further detail to be submitted. Um, and the windows are largely, uh, as mentioned on the update sheet, considered to be acceptable. The tree officer is satisfied with the tree protection measures uh, for the lime trees, uh, because obviously these are of importance, visual importance within the park. Overall, the visual impact of the cafe building will be neutral, and that's weighed with the public benefits through the improved facilities. And so it's not considered that there will be harm to the character and appearance of the conservation area. Um, in considering the flood risk, the site is within flood zone three and has been built so that the internal floor level is above the potential floor level. In addition, the void under the building will enable flood water to be contained if a flood event occurred. And this would not limit the capacity of the floodplain to contain water. Uh, we have this plan here. Uh, the pink parts show the existing footprint of the buildings and the yellowy orange cover shows where the flood void will be um, areas benefiting from the flood void. The Environment Agency and our the Council's engineers as local lead flood authority are satisfied with these proposals and the flood risk assessment and mitigation measures can all be secured through conditions. Um, the flood risk assessment and drainage strategy have indicated sustainable drainage methods through a garden bioretention area to the south of the building. This was considered to be a practical solution given the groundwater levels in this area. However, further construction details are required in the form of a pre-commencement condition. Um, in considering the sustainability of the building, the town council have indicated that they wish to build a zero carbon building. Um, this application has included the solar panels, on the south elevation of the building and a ground source heat pump. Policy CS15 requires non-residential buildings to reach a BRIAM score of excellence. In this case, a BRIAM assessment has been undertaken and a very good standard is expected. Um, it can be difficult for buildings of this size to achieve an excellent standard due to the scale of the development um, and the level of um, surveys which are required at the design stage and early stages, which make it prohibitively expensive, as well as there being unknown factors such as the future occupier of the building not being known, so details of refrigeration and cooking systems are not yet known. The building, however, did score highly on management, health and well-being, and the energy sections. The building is considering zero carbon emissions as required by CS15 for major development. And so given the scale of the proposal, it's considered in this instance that the very good score for BRIAM and a condition requiring zero carbon emissions make it satisfactory with regards to policy CS15. Um, as I outlined in the review of consultations, 
uh, conditions are recommended to deal with the requirements with regards to ecology, archaeology and environmental health. Um, I may have skipped over that, but environmental health uh, required conditions with respect to no noise and odour from the cooking and extraction systems from the kitchen. Um, during the committee site visit, um, access to the site during uh, construction work was, uh, was raised as a, a potential issue. Um, these details haven't been included within the application. However, given the location of the site to the um, avenue, Lime Avenue, which is also a public right of way, and the proximity to the play area and skate park um, and general level of people in the area, in the interest of public safety, a plan should be submitted to indicate parking for site operatives. Um, and this has been included within the update sheet um, for a, a pre-commencement condition, which should include details of parking, loading and storing arrange, arrangements for plant and material, access to the site, including any hard standings, and the haulage across the site, as well as details of any hoardings around the site. These can all be desked addressed through a pre-commencement condition. Overall, this is an application to replace two buildings within Victoria Park and replace with a larger building to provide additional community facilities, consisting of a cafe with internal and external seating, additional public toilets and a changing room. These are of public benefit to the users of the park and will not harm the character and appearance of the conservation area will not result in additional flood risk within the site or elsewhere. The indication that the building will be carbon neutral is balanced with the BREM, very good standard. And in this instance, given the scale of cafe building pr proposals and um, contribution it will make to the wider community and users of Victoria Park as supported by policy ADPP2, the application is recommended for approval subject to the conditions in the report and the update sheet. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mrs. Cutts. Uh, I omitted to outline for the benefit of those watching the uh, format of each application, or indeed just the one application this evening. I will go back and explain that in a minute, but I would like to see if our highways officer, Mr. Paul Goddard, has anything to add um, to explain particularly that added condition, which I think may sort of refer to his aspects. Have you anything to, to add, Mr. Goddard? Thank you, Chairman. From our highest point of view, we have no objection to the proposal, um, but concern has quite rightly been raised uh, during construction, um, considering the number of people that live the area. And uh, of course, the, the, the site is not near any vehicular public highway, but there is a public highway, that is footpath Newbury 23, that of course passes uh, immediately adjacent to the building. So we'd be keen to ensure that all the pedestrians that use the area would be protected during construction. And therefore I support and would recommend uh, inclusion of the condition uh, that Mrs. Cutts uh, just mentioned to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goddard. And of course, members will have the opportunity to, just, to um, ask officers questions later. So the procedure now is that um, having heard everything that officers believe we need to know about the application, we now have a chance for uh, other interested parties to have their say in the following order. The parish, or in this case, town council representative will go next, then objectors if there are any, and there are none uh, at this application, then supporters, again, there are none, and finally, the applicant uh, and agent, and we will be uh, introducing them shortly. Uh, sorry, not finally, the finally is the ward member, uh, in this case, Councillor Moore, uh, before we turn to questions. And after each of those presentations, there will be a chance for members to question the presenter um, before we question the officers uh, and move on to a debate. So um, may I ask, um, the uh, parish town council representatives to uh, prepare to uh, speak to us. We have, I believe, four people who are going to share the time. Uh, perhaps um, 
Uh, which of you would like to introduce your colleagues? Uh, bear with me, Chairman. I'll just bring them into the meeting room. Sorry, can right. I just interrupt? Are they speaking as applicant or as the parish? Because I think on our list they're speaking as applicant. Right. Okay, yes, they're, <laughs> that's true. They are speaking as applicant. They still speak next <laughs> because there are no other parish representatives. Yes, this is why it's, it's, it's an unusual one, isn't it? So we have no parish representative speaking as such, nor any objector, nor any supporter. So we move straight on to the applicant and agent speaking. So uh, uh, there are four of you, uh, gentlemen. Which of you is going to introduce and start the presentation? And you will have five minutes between you. And Mr. Oliver is going to keep the time and will tell you when you have one minute left and when you have 10 seconds left, at which point we'd like you to wind up uh, and let members ask you questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, good evening, Chairman, members. Uh, I'm David Ingram, the Community Services Manager at New Bhutan Council. Are responsible to the council for the delivery of this project. Um, I'm joined this evening by Michael Paglioli, the lead ar architect, and councillor uh, uh, Roger Honeyman, chair of the project committee for the town council, in case there are any technical or policy questions that I might not be able to answer. Chair, uh, this project has had a long and at times very turbulent journey. Uh, and as you've seen from the office report on page 80, uh, it's been to this committee in its various forms over many years. The reason of this application, Chairman, is twofold. First, uh, members will have seen the current kiosk building in the park. Uh, it's no longer fit for purpose. Its use as a kiosk is very weather dependent. The franchisee uh, must plan his staffing, his supplies, and open when the weather suits, uh, he doesn't have a choice. There are no facilities for the public and the building and its catering layout need major overhaul. The town council no longer feels that this facility is satisfactory in this modern era. In addition, the boat shed, as it's known, the brick building behind are originally designed, as the planning officers pointed out, and built as an air raid shelter to serve the Vic Victoria Park preschool is now just a derelict shell and subject to vandalism. And I regret to have to report it was broken into last night and I've just had to uh, organize a reboarding for the umpteenth time this year. Um, the second reason that we're bringing forward this application, Chairman, is the need for public toilets in the park this, itself. When the park's busy and the tennis and the children's uh, water splash park in full operation, the park attracts many families, and I'm sure most members will have seen that. If there is a need, they often have to pack up and head to the wharf car park toilets or to Parkway when these facilities open, and then come back and start again. The town council has many requests from newbie residents and from visitors alike for toilets to be provided in the park. The options have been considered and the cost benefit analysis suggests that demolition of the two existing facilities and a reprovision of a not modern uh, build uh, with all the facilities is the best value for money option. The proposed development therefore is a combination of a new modern fit for purpose catering offer, an undercover area, as the officer has pointed out, which in the winter months can be enclosed, hence the big sliding glass doors that uh, we've discussed with the planning team uh, and, and subject to the amended conditions. New toilets. And it's attended that this facility be operated as a community cafe facility, a hub in the park, as it were. The toilets itself will have the, the normal female, male and baby change facilities, but we've been in discussion with many disability groups uh, and an organization members may come across changing places. And it's now intended that a fully compliant facility for the young and adult change be provided with the appropriate toilet washing facilities and a change table, and also an electric hoist for that specific user group. Uh, this we can then register on the national database 
and it becomes a destination facility for the people with those needs. The building as set out in the application is now acceptable to the Environment Agency, as you've heard. They've finally satisfied that the one in 100 year flood risk assessment can be met. Supported, as you've seen by the report from your officers, as being compliant with all the statutory provisions and is intended to be carbon neutral as a requirement of the Town Council's Climate Emergency Resolution. Chairman, members, I am hopeful that you're able to support this application and assist the Town Council in finally moving to the next stage of this project plan, and that is to seek building regulation approval and go to tender for his construction. That would be a major step forward in the vision of this project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ingram. Um, you seem to have been well within the time. I haven't, we haven't even got to the one minute warning. Um, so members, um, have you any questions to Mr. Ingram and his colleagues? Councillor Cole, I think you were first. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, and thank you, Mr. Ingram, for your presentation. I've got a couple of questions. Um, could you confirm, first of all, the material that the roof will be made of and the colour of it? Uh, it's, a, it's going to be a metal standing uh, seam roof. Um, the colour is part of the conditions that the um, uh, application has with it. Um, we, we will um, obviously have to discuss that with the planning officer and come up with one that, from a conservation point of view, is going to be acceptable. Um, but you need to bear in mind also that it is intended because of the carbon neutrality to have uh, solar panels on one side to generate uh, the electricity that's needed. Thank you. Um, and the second question, if you don't mind. Uh, I'm pleased that the building uh, is going to be carbon neutral, uh, but can you explain to me, please, why Briam Excellent can't be achieved? When it's, um, it's it, because this is, uh, despite what the case officers have said, this is clearly in, in contravention of our policy CS15. Um, Chair, if I may, um, if I, I'm be very brief and blunt, um, there are conflicts between the two. Uh, and, and probably the easiest way to explain it, for example, um, is um, on the roof. Um, if we put a green roof on there, we would get Briam credits and that would push a lot further. But if we put a green roof on there, we can't put solar panels. So we can't ge generate electricity. So we can't move towards carbon neutrality. There is ambiguity between carbon neutral and Briam. Briam has not caught up. Uh, and this, it's, it's, it's one of many issues we have in, in trying to uh, come to terms with trying to be carbon neutral and to reach Briam. And, and we're finding it, and we have struggled for the last 12 months to get there. Thank you, Councillor Cole. Councillor Barnett. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm not certain actually whether the question's relevant to uh, Mr. Ingram or, or um, Mrs. Kurtz, but um, obviously in the presentation, um, Mr. Ingram, the um, uh, the level of the base of the uh, building was discussed in relationship to the flood. Um, but I'm trying to ascertain what sort of height would be the uh, the ground level of the um, footprint where, where you're actually standing within the building against the actual um, grass verge outside. I know I know it's obviously going to be disabled friendly, but um, how high is it going to be raised uh, against the existing um, park um, greenery? I think it can. So my, um, perhaps if I could uh, ask the lead architect to answer that one. Can you hear me? Hello? Um, just to say, yeah, um, with regards to the flood zone three, uh, the A basically insisted on the finished floor level has to be at least 40 centimetres above the existing ground levels, plus another 30 centimetres of what they term as freeboard, which is just to allow for any waves and that kind of thing. You know, having been a resident in Newbury all my life, I've never seen the park flooded up to three quarters of a metre. But 
this is what we now face. We, we get these sort of uh, things set now on, on flood zones and buildings are being raised higher and higher. And that's one of the reasons why it's had to be raised to that height. So uh, like I say, it's, it's dealt with that uh, element in the design and having the void underneath the building, which again, we've got bars around the openings and again, we'll have landscaping to suit that as well. So, you know, not just going to staring at gaping big holes. Members, did you, did you manage to hear that, right? It was a little bit difficult, I felt, but if, as long as you heard it, that's all right. Um, is that all right with you, Councillor Barnett? You heard the answer? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I heard the relevant parts. Obviously, it was distorted, but I heard the relevant points. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Culver, you had your hand up, I think. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Cole um, touched upon what I was going to ask, but... It says in paragraph 6.8 that the bream, some of the bream aspects cannot be assessed at this stage. Is it possible that if those things are fulfilled that you could then achieve an excellent bream standard or is it too late to achieve that now? So um, if, if I may chair, uh, my brief from the town council is uh, to target excellent uh, and that is what I'm targeting and that is uh, what um, I have asked the lead architect to work towards. So that is our target. But uh, Chair, um, we have to be realistic and, and, and both the lead architect itself have been uh, in, in the construction business for long enough to know that, that there is this conflict uh, and we've taken a, uh, a view that we may not achieve that despite our best efforts because we are targeting uh, the carbon neutral first and the brium second. So in answer is, I am desperate to get excellent, but we may not, we may miss the target by a few points. And one other question, if I may, Chairman. Um, the void underneath, is it basically something that if it was filled with flood water, it would need to be pumped out or is it designed so that it naturally seeps into the ground eventually? Uh, Michael, if you would. It's a, of, it's a bit of a both really, it's both to let water pass through underneath the building, as well as whatever mitigation we come up with with the, uh, the soakways around the building, um, which the consultant will come up with. Can I also just extend a bit more detail on the BRIAM aspect, in that it's noble to have this sort of policy to go for excellent, like David said, we want to try and do that. The issue you have with BRIAM, it's great for massive projects. It's not so suitable for small scale projects like this. And there are points that you simply cannot achieve. They're there to be grabbed, you can't get them. And a good example is you get a point for having a lift. Well, this isn't a multi-story building. So straight away, there's a point you cannot get. And, and it, it sort of happens like this throughout the whole thing, which is why we've managed to get to good. And if we can go beyond that, or if we fall short by that point too, that's why we've had to, we've had lengthy pre-application discussion with the, the council on it. So to explain what, what's happened with that. So, you know, we want to achieve, I want to achieve it as well. But if, if you technically are being tripped up because the way the system is currently designed, it's not the building's fault. You could, it's also to do reports as well. The building could actually technically achieve excellent, but you need a load of reports to back up that it will do it, but it doesn't actually technically change the building anymore as well. So the sort of, I'm sure it's going to evolve over time, Brian, anyway, but it, it, like I say, yes, we, the goal is to do that. And like David said, with the roof, we've, you know, we've got the zinc, but also half of it's going to be covered with solar panels as well. That's also another thing why we didn't have roof tiles as well, because we're worried about vandalism as well, because I think there are issues with some of the other buildings in the park. Thank you, Mr. Pagliari. I think that concludes it. Any other, oh, yes. Uh, we've got two more questions here. Um, yes. Yes, I'll come to you now. Um, yes, Councillor Hooker. Thank you. Um, when we look at planning applications, obviously the visual effect is quite important. My question is on security. Um, we've just heard that the, the air road shelves have been broken into again. What's this building going to look like when it's closed up for the evening? Um, what, what security um, provision is going to be put in place with so much glass? Um, 
Chairman, if I may, um, a, a number of uh, provisions. Uh, we, we are working with our neighbourhood unit at Thames Valley Police about security, about CCTV, about alarms. So part of uh, the project, which obviously is not subject to planning at this stage, is about how we look after the building uh, after it's locked up and closed, and, and particularly also uh, how we manage and look after the, the uh, public toilet element which won't be part of um, the franchise uh, to the operator. Uh, it is being considered, it is being discussed actively, uh, and we are very conscious, uh, uh, not least, um, that our insurance company uh, will, will be asking those very difficult questions before they insure it. So it is part of the overall project, but obviously at this stage, it, it's not part of the planning process. Thank you. Thank you. Happy, All right, C Councillor Abbs, you all. Also, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, actually, I wanted to come back to the area underneath the uh, the new development, or potentially new development. And um, like like any building that's on stilts, effectively, um, I can imagine a scenario where lots of material will blow under there, or uh, things will decide to camp under there, and and so on and so forth. How is that? Is it? I think at 75 centimetres, was that the roughly the, the, the ground clearance that's going to be? It's, it's almost enough for someone to crawl under. How is it going to be dealt with to make sure it remains healthy, clean, etc.? cetera? There, there will be metal bars between the, the in the openings and then potentially if we can put a mesh as well just to restrict any sort of debris or anything being blown in there. The bars would certainly stop anybody of any certain size to attempt to try and get under it as well, because that was another issue that we have to sort of bear in mind. Uh, can I uh, ask you, do those bar are they fixed or they will they allow periodic access? Because well, you I mean, may stop a bit of litter, but you won't stop rats, etc. I mean, well, if I'm thinking ahead a little bit, I, I would like to have them fixed and then you have access from inside the building to go under, under it. Be, but I, I do apologise, Michael. I'm, I'm not quite hearing you for some reason. Could you say it again, please? Can you hear me now? What we're looking to do is most of those bars, I would say, are going, going to be fixed. But if you can have some that are removable, ideally, I'm thinking you probably want to have access from inside the building to get into that void if you need to in an emergency. So that sounds like you're developing that idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've got okay. That. Right. Okay. Thank you. Members, I think that's uh, done with the applicant or uh, agent, uh, all of them. Now we have uh, Councillor Moore as ward member. Is Councillor Moore ready to speak? Uh, again, you know the score, five minutes. Um, you'll be given the warning by Mr Oliver at the one minute to go point and at the 10 seconds. Have you to I you. Am, I am, Chairman. Thank you. Um, and I, members, um, I should... Um, uh, first, uh, declare uh, um, an interest uh, since I too am a member of uh, Newbury Town Council and its Planning and Highways Committee um, and uh, participated uh, in uh, such discussions as we had. But as you've heard, um, uh, we, we came to no judgment on it because of the conflict of interest. Um, much has been written and said uh, in support of this application, and I don't intend uh, to repeat that. Uh, but to confirm that I wholly support the application. Uh, and simply to emphasise that the development of uh, improved facilities in Victoria Park uh, has been an aim of Newbury Town Council over a prolonged period. Uh, and that has covered uh, three different administrations, including two changes of control. Um, it has community support, uh, not least uh, in the absence, uh, complete absence of any objections. It replaces uh, what was, I think, euphemistically in the, in the presentation called bland, but actually, as you'll have seen from the pictures, very tired uh, um, structures with something appropriate uh, to the 21st century, uh, not least um, uh, in, uh, in its approach to bream and carbon neutrality. I strongly urge the committee uh, to confirm the officer's recommendation for approval. And thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Any questions to Councillor Moore? Members? That looks like uh, you're free to go or to just listen. Thank you very much.
Members, would somebody like to start? Uh, well, we have quite, sorry, questions to officers. Any questions to our officers before we start a debate? Councillor Bart. Chairman, a uh, question to Mr Goddard um, in relationship to uh, the construction or would be a proposed construction site. Um, at the present time, if a fair or circus or major event is held on the um, uh, Victoria Park, access obviously is via the uh, St Mary's Road and then the rear access along the footpath. Uh, with quite really uh, uh, rigid conditions on access times and obviously dates and so forth. Is that your um, uh, view that there will be uh, a quite a rigid um, uh, view in relationship to access, not only for obviously vehicles of the, uh, uh, of the um, uh, building site workers, uh, obviously their vehicles, but also um, construction vehicles, HGVs or similar to HGVs, um, because that footpath at the back of the uh, road, of course, is used by a lot of school children um, at certain times of the day. So is that your um, view that it will be um, uh, a quite a considerable uh, constraint imposed on the uh, construction activities? Chairman, uh, thank you. As the site is in close proximity to a school, we do normally limit uh, deliveries um, during uh, school opening and closing times in any case. Um, that would be sort of standard practice in any sort of construction management condition. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cole, there's the only other hand I've seen so far. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, under point 6.7, um, where it talks about flooding, it says the floor space of the building is such that the sequential test is not applicable in this instance. Could you just explain to me a bit more about what that actually means? Is it that the floor space is too small or too large? Yeah, the, um, the guidance set out in the uh, planning policy um, in, in, in the planning policy guidance, it sets out um, what development is, um, is subject to the sequential test. Um, and it sets out um, also um, its type of buildings within different flood zones and also on the size of buildings. And because this is um, below that threshold, um, and basically the sequential test doesn't apply in this instance, in this development. Thank you. Councillor Kant, you had a question. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Sean, just a matter of interest, the follow-up really on Councillor Ad's question, which was one that I would have asked had he not. Uh, it strikes me that there's, there could be issues about uh, environmental health, small children, dogs, and other things relating to the cavity underneath the building. Is it possible to make it some sort of condition that it will be secured in a way to prevent any of those risks being evident? Yeah, um, condition, um, the drainage condition, um, condition 14 um, includes a number of measures for um, the maintenance of the sustainable drainage details. Um, and part, um, part E um, requires details of the void underneath the building um, to be submitted. Um, uh, there, uh, the arches need to be filled, uh, fitted with grills to prevent access by children, animals, or to prevent the storage. So, so that is covered under the under the. Um, SUDS condition. Um, also, Part G talks about how details will be managed and maintained after completion of the development. And in, your, in your view, that's sufficient? That's sufficient. Thank, that thank you. With that. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Any more questions to the officers? Right, thank you. Uh, we now need to debate the matter. Yes, Councillor Doherty. 
Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd actually like to uh, uh, echo everything we've heard tonight and propose that we accept the recommendations as laid out in 8.1. Uh, as um, Councillor Moore said, this has long been an aspiration for Victoria Park. Uh, if anyone's had the chance to look at the Newbury vision planning work, again, the green space that's going to be key to the future of Newbury um, and making sure that it's accessible, people have the opportunity to enjoy it enhancing that kiosk can only be a benefit and I know it's been a long-standing um, aspiration I was involved in the previous administration that had the planning permission as well so I'm more than happy to propose that we accept the recommendations as laid out in 8.1 of the papers thank you thank you councillor Doherty well unless members want to debate uh, I've got hands up from councillor Barnett Councillor Wollaston and now Councillor Cole and Councillor Ab. So we'll unfortunately uh, we'll give you Chairman, a chance because I, I do like asked. to allow a bit of a debate. But we have a proposal. So at some stage, I'd be very happy to take somebody as a seconder. So in that order, Ch Ch Chairman, uh, was was I next on the peck and order? Did you? Well, say? you were the next one that I saw. Oh. We're we're doing hands up. So I've ceased to look at the the screen in front of me because we seem to be all here and all doing hands up. I think I had you down first, and then Councillor Cole, Councillor Williston, Councillor Abbs. Okay, Chairman. I mean, I think it would be more appropriate that uh, somebody other than a Newbury Town twin hatted person uh, was prepared to second it. So uh, I would obviously be very supportive of it, but I would hope that somebody else would be supporting it. Um, I, I feel it's it, it's one of these applications where uh, members probably feel it's like the old Grand Duke, the Duke of York, you know, marched the uh, troops up to the top of the hill and somehow it didn't quite possibly get them down to the bottom of the hill. Um, and uh, so uh, hopefully in this case, um, members feel that this is a very worthwhile, very productive um, um, application because some applications, one wonders whether they are the, the way they, they're being proposed is appropriate. But in this case, I think this is one that's going to be for the benefit, not only in Newby Town, West Parks, and obviously surrounding area. And it actually takes on board a lot of the needs of all different groups of people that will actually access the park. So yes, I should be definitely supporting the application. Thank you, Councillor Barnett. Councillor Cole. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. I, I don't wish to rain on the parade, but I have some comments to make. Um, I am supportive of this proposal. However, uh, I find it... I understand the issue is around BM. Uh, we've been around this uh, circle a lot of times. It is difficult to achieve. But I also feel that if public bodies can't or won't achieve BM excellence, then how can we expect other uh, organisations and, uh, and uh, uh, developers to do to do that? We should be setting an example. Uh, and I feel that uh, that has been overlooked so, uh, somehow. I applaud the fact that it, the building will be carbon neutral. Uh, turning to the building, um, the current building is being described as bland and uninspiring. I could say the same for this design. Um, it's got a metal roof, which I understand will support uh, um, uh, solar panels, but you could also say it's more appropriate for a rural barn than a town centre building. Um, I feel that are we, are we prepared to accept a mediocre design? Uh, and does the public benefit of this design outweigh design principles? Uh, and I think we've got to look at design principles because we're not just doing something here and now. It's going to be something that's going to be a good example of planning from a town council. Um, and I think it could be a bit more innovative and a little more exciting uh, in, this, in, in, in Victoria Park. Um, Councillor Dockett has uh, alluded to the Newbury uh, Town Centre plan, uh, which I think is, uh, is also encouraging us to think and be innovative. And I'm disappointed that the Town Council has this wonderful opportunity to, to have a building that is going to be more fit for purpose, including public laboratories, but they haven't had the vision or the ambition to do something that is going to be really outstanding and have a wow factor in Victoria Park. Uh, we're sticking with something that is mediocre, typical public building, and it's. A, uh, I'm sad that the opportunity has been missed, uh, although I am supportive of the fact that the building is needed. 
so I'm in a bit of a dilemma here. Thank you, Councillor Cole. Councillor Wollaston. Thank you, Jim. Um, I can understand the concerns about the roof, but I think this is a practicality issue where we don't want vandalism on a clay tile roof, or whatever it might be. And I'd like to second the motion, please, to support officers' recommendation. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Wollaston. Uh, we should move to the vote, but um, as you're on my right and don't want to be nudged in the bar afterwards. <laughs> Thank you very much. Quick yeah, word very, from you, Councillor. Well, I didn't know we were going to the bar afterwards, but uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I'm I just a point of reference. This will be only the second major development to be achieved carbon neutrality that this administration has approved. So I'm more than happy to uh, be, I'd love to have seconded it, Howard, you, you jumped in before me and I would have done it anyway, but uh, not being dual headed. So I think, I think we have to applaud ourselves as a, as a council getting behind this. And I think we have to applaud New Britain Council for wanting to deliver that. I do recall that they're being very clear that the aim is to achieve uh, excellent Hillary. So I'm, I'm you know, I, I really hope they do. It's kind of, um, that's <laughs> promise less, deliver more type solution might be good. And of course, it would be great to have a fantastic, innovative design that you know people would win awards for. But unfortunately, I, we have to look at the budget at the end of the day. And um, there are rumblings on Facebook about th this the, the amount of money that's being borrowed to build it anyway. So let, let's let's be practical. Who, who's going to pat us on the back for spending a few million on something that's you know uh, would so. That's really all I wanted to say to point out. To be honest, well done, New Britain Council. Well done, Bar West Berkshire Council, assuming we approve this in a moment or two. But I will certainly be supporting it. Thank you, Councillor Abbs. I just would point out that actually the cost of things isn't a matter for this committee. That might be a matter for the applicant. But <laughs> you're a businessman and, of course, you're always thinking of costs, I'm sure. So we have a proposal. We have a seconder. Now, before I move to the vote, Mrs Armour, um, I just think we need to be quite clear. Are we quite clear about conditions? We've heard a little bit about the one on the update sheet, the, the site access plan. Is everybody happy as you, the proposer, Councillor Doherty? Are you happy with everything? Right. Yeah. I mean, Councillor Abbs, yes. Just, I, I just want, there was a mention of access under the into the underbelly um, to make sure that it can be maintained. I just want to make sure I that that's... Mrs Cut said that would be covered in the SUDS condition. Oh, okay. You know, in order to maintain the drainage, you have to make clear, you know, debris and everything has to be clear out of that. So I think that point's been made and I think it will be covered under that condition. Um, it's on page 92. Thank you very much. But since we're all here in the room, we're just going to do, yeah, show of hands. All right. Chairman, microphone. Right, so uh, it's not um, the named vote call out by the legal officer anymore. So those of you who've been attending these uh, virtual planning meetings will know that was how we did it. But back to the normal way, when members are all in the room, they can simply raise their hand. So could I ask those in favour of the motion uh, to support the officer's recommendation to approve this application, show their hands. Looks like everybody except me and I said I wouldn't vote. So I think um, that's done. I think thank you very much, members, for... Approving that application, I'm sure Newby Town Council will be very grateful to you. And let's both take the credit as both councils for uh, achieving zero carbon, if nothing else. Thank you very much, members. Don't think so. We normally have no, there's no appeals item. So I think I can declare the meeting closed. <laughs>